Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Um, if you've looked into building microwave stuff, uh, 10 gig stuff in particular, or you know 3.4 gig or 5.6 gigs, 5.7 gig stuff, if you've looked into it you've probably run across the concept of pipe cap filters uh, using copper plumbing pipe caps as uh, little uh, uh, kind of cavity filters for uh, you know for bandpass filters uh, to get rid of unwanted uh, uh, frequencies above and below uh, what you're working with. Uh, so um, there's lots of stuff that's been written um, about uh, how to work with these uh, pipe caps, how to solder them to boards in particular. And it all sounded really simple to me until I tried to do it. And then it wasn't so simple at all. And I ended up ruining several uh, of the W1GHZ uh, boards trying to solder a pipe cast to them with the equipment that I have and uh, I think that's a key point I think that the soldering equipment I have is probably not entirely up to this task and so I had to learn how to do this with what I have so I didn't have to go out and spend a bunch of money on uh, on more equipment uh, just for soldering these uh, pipe caps to uh, to a board so uh, this is a rather long video documenting the method that I finally came up with that uh, worked for me in uh, fabricating the and uh, soldering these uh, pipe caps. Um, so you're probably not going to want to sit through this whole long video unless you're actually into working with these and maybe you've had some issues with them yourself and are looking for some ideas. Whether any of this will work for you or not, I don't know. This is what ended up working for me. Uh, again with the equipment uh, uh, that I have to work with for soldering and so on. Um, I did film these segments quite some time ago as I was doing this work and I deliberately waited to uh, post this video uh, in order to, to finish this video to do this final segment and uh, to post this video until I actually had this board up and running and I was certain that everything works. Uh, I certainly didn't want to post uh, a video on how to uh, work with pipe caps until I knew that they were actually functional in the actual project that I built. So I'm satisfied that they are now. So uh, here you go. Uh, after a lot of false starts, and I didn't include all the uh, mistakes that I made in here, this is just the, uh, the uh, final method that ended up working for me on how I uh, was able to, to successfully deal with these little devils. Uh, with the uh, tools and equipment that I have on hand. Well, we're on take three of trying to film this segment of how I locate and mark the center of a pipe cap and also check them for flatness. I had a couple of issues here tripping over the tripod that's holding the camera and really making a mess of the video. So I'm going to try this one more time and see if I can get it right. Uh, I have a couple of half inch uh, pipe caps down here, which are going to be the 10 gig filters. A uh, machinist V block, an ultra fine Sharpie for marking, some eighth inch thick uh, scraps of just aluminum, uh, these were aluminum rectangle bar stock, and a couple of three quarter inch one, uh, quarter inch thick ones rather that I use for the three quarter inch pipe caps, which I'm not doing today, I'm just doing a half inch one. So first of all, I take something really flat, like a block of this uh, aluminum, and lay the pipe cap on it, and eyeball it, and kind of rotate the pipe cap around to check the flatness of the open end of the pipe cap for later soldering to a circuit board. Now these uh, these look fine to me. I don't I don't think this needs any flattening. If it did, I would take a piece of sandpaper like this um, 240 grit sanding disc on a very flat surface like this range top. And push the V, push the uh, pipe cap down on there firmly, and drag it around to flatten it out. I don't think this one needs that, so I'll get on with marking the center. Put it in the V block. Put these couple of scraps of aluminum in the V block just to build it up so the sharpie is closer to being uh, in the center of the pipe cap. I'll take the sharpie here, lay it in there, and hold it down nice and nice and firm. Hold the pipe cap down nice and firm, and while pushing it down into the V-block and up against the Sharpie, rotate it. Now this is a little bit tricky when I move my fingers, the pipe cap tends to want to flop up and mess up the circle that I'm making on it as I'm rotating it here. 
and I usually try and go around a couple of times to make sure I've got a nice circle all the way around so I guess bear with me here as I work on marking this to try and make sure that I've got the thing fully fully and nicely marked all right let's check it here and I'll cap this sharpie I forgot to do that the other day and dried one out and had to go into town and, and get another one. Yeah, All right, I think we've got a fairly good circle there. So let me see if I can not trip over the tripod this time as I come around here. And hopefully the camera focuses well enough so you can see that nice little circle now uh, centered up on the pipe cap. And now it's a small enough diameter circle so I can take my little... Um, my little awl here which is fairly sharp and uh, and kind of make a little dimple in the center of that. Now to do that I'm going to have to use my lighted head magnifier here uh, to see what I'm doing because I'm blind as a bat. So if you see my head and this thing getting into the shot, uh, sorry about that, such is life. If I'm going to do this video and show you how this works I uh, have to use this thing. Otherwise I'm doing nothing. So put this on and uh, the circle is small enough so I can I can pretty well eyeball where the center of it is, trying to get this thing right on the center. Just make a little bit of a dimple first and check and see if it looks centered. That's close but not quite, so I'll uh, just kind of try to push it to the side a little bit there and go a little bit harder to get it centered up. And I just keep playing around until I'm happy that I've got uh, close enough to the center and then I make a good... Uh, Press down really firmly and make a good dimple in there. And there you go. I, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with that one. It would be better, you know, if you had uh, proper machinery to really do this right like they would in a machine shop. But I think these are going to work fine. So there's a nice little, uh, nice little indentation for the uh, drill bit there. And first I'm going to drill these 1 16th inch and then I'm going to drill them out to a... Uh, somewhat larger size, whatever the proper size is for the uh, number 4-40 tap for the uh, screw that goes in this. I think it's a number 43. Um, don't quote me on that. If it's wrong, I'll uh, overlay some text on the video. So that's the next thing I'm going to do is uh, drill and tap the uh, pipe cap and I have to move to a different location and get set up for that. Okay, so we're at the drill press here ready to drill and tap this pipe cap. Now um, I've got the drill press set on its slowest speed for drilling copper and I'm using a, a brand new very sharp uh, drill bit first of all a 1 16th inch just to put a pilot hole in here and then the uh, proper size drill bit for the hole to thread 4-40 and um, I've got the uh, top of the drill press uh, open here and I'm going to leave it that way. Later on when I'm uh, tapping the hole you won't be able to see this part because I'll have the camera focused down below but I'll just be rotating this uh, by hand not using the motor but rotating by hand for tapping the uh, the pipe cap. Something I've uh, found to be uh, quite helpful in getting a, a, a nice a straight uh, hole tapped in something. So let me see if I can get the camera positioned back on the uh, tripod here. First of all, I'm going to drill this pilot hole, and then I'll quickly switch bits and uh, and drill it out to the final size here. Goes right through there nicely when it's a nice uh, sharp drill bit. Let me get this uh, out of the way here a little bit. Quickly uh, change bits. To uh, this one here, maybe, maybe not. There we go. Put that in there. Put the uh, pipe cap back in here. And now I'll drill this out to the final side. I'm going to turn on my little light on my head here so I can see that a little better. And there we go. So that's one drilled pipe cap. And uh, 
I'll shut off the camera here for a minute and I'll set up for tapping and I'll show you how uh, I do that. So I'm set up for tapping this pipe cap. I have the 4-40 tap in the uh, truck of the drill press here. Got the pipe cap uh, secured in this clamp uh, to help keep it from spinning. And this is going to be a tricky thing to film. I'm probably going to be right in the way and this clamp may rotate and get right in the way so you can't see what's actually happening with the tap. Uh, this is a three-handed operation and I only have two hands and I don't have a helper so I'm going to use uh, one hand to control the feed pressure on the tap and also my arm to block the uh, clamp from turning so the pipe cap can't move while I'm using my other hand to uh, turn the the drill press to do the uh, tapping here so I'm probably going to be right in the way but uh, this is uh, this is how I do this I'll try to keep my head out of the way if I can First of all, get this uh, centered up and the tap started down in there. Put a little bit of pressure on it. Get my arm up here and while uh, gently applying feed pressure, turn this drill press by hand. And I don't have to back it off uh, as I'm doing this to clear the, uh, clear the chips from the threads because this metal is so thin. It'll work all right without doing that. So... Uh, Feed it down through here, and uh, that should be far enough. Now what I do, because uh, I'm worried about trying to back it off this way, about uh, possibly damaging the threads I just made, is I just take the clamp off, get it out of the way, let this thing come up, and then I just unscrew the uh, pipe cap from the tap by hand, very carefully here, so I don't mess up those, uh, those threads. Uh, there we go. There's a, uh, a tapped hole there. And uh, I'm just going to use a uh, somewhat larger drill bit just to get in here and clear some of the uh, burrs from around that hole. Now I tried using a, uh, a uh, countersink to do this uh, before and I found that being tapered more it removed a little too much of the metal and kind of ate into the, uh, the threads. So this time I am trying the uh, the drill bit to remove as little metal as possible. It's uh, it's not tapered quite as much, so it removes a little bit less uh, less metal from there, and I think leaves more of my threads intact. So now I've got a threaded hole that's uh, deburred. I think it's uh, well enough deburred on the inside. Yeah, it feels okay. So there's my uh, there's my hole in the pipe cap. One other thing with these pipe cap filters is that we need. Uh, wires sticking through the board that will be inside the pipe cap as uh, coupling probes into and out of the filter and what people often do is use a capacitor like this with the leads uh, spread apart a little bit so when you push it in the board the pressure of the leads uh, pushing uh, against the sides of the holes tends to hold it in place and you can't measure the distance uh, of those leads sticking through the board when you're actually soldering this because the pipe cap will already be in place so they're inside the pipe cap so what a lot of people do to get it right is they put it in this way before the pipe cap is on and measure the distance uh, sticking out get it where they want it and then come up and measure the distance on the top side of the board between the board and the bottom of the uh, capacitor itself as a depth gauge so they can they can get it back in the right depth later on for soldering i find that for me seems a little imprecise because each capacitor body might be molded or formed a little little differently so you may have to measure each side of the capacitor uh, separately and and each capacitor separately so um, I don't know I guess it works fine but uh, for me it just uh, it doesn't feel right so I have a little different method of doing this what I do is I take the uh, take the capacitors and uh, I need to get some more some more light here so I can see and I'll try to keep my head out of this shot if I can so I hold the capacitor behind a uh, behind a piece of uh, bar stock or something like this and I have a couple pieces here just to get a suitable distance and then try and get a good uh, a good solid mark on there with my ultra fine sharpie and go over and do this other lead and I'm probably getting some on my finger here too but I don't care It'll come off with a little isopropyl alcohol. So, yeah, I got a good mark on my finger there, didn't I? 
So I get a good mark on there, and these two marks are not uh, not quite the same either. I'll show you that in a minute, but but uh, let me see if I can get this inserted back in the uh, in the trusty board here, and then uh, once I get the capacitor back in the board, I take a little depth gauge, and I don't know if I can keep this. That's the wrong end of the depth gauge. Um, I don't know if I can keep this in view of the camera where I can see it, but uh, I won't actually try to do this because I can't get in close enough to see it while I'm also uh, looking to see if it's still in the uh, camera view, but I would adjust this to the exact depth I want, which is 10 millimeters on each uh, on each lead here, and, and this one isn't quite right now, but I would adjust them to the exact depth I want, get both of them uh, out right, and then uh, flip this over and uh, measure the distance up from the board to the line typically to the bottom of the line because you can see one of these lines is extra extends up the lead further than the other uh, but the bottom of the line is fairly fairly accurate because that was against the uh, the top of the bar stock when I was marking it so I'd measure the distance up to the bottom of the line and whatever it is uh, I'd make a note of that distance so that later when I put them back in when the uh, when they're inside the pipe cap I would be able to tell that uh, I've got them in the right distance so that I have the proper length sticking out on this other side of the board. So, so that's the way I'm dealing with this. Uh, I know there's a lot of ways to do it, uh, but uh, I think this is going to work for me. <laughs> Time will tell, but it uh, seems like a good idea at the moment. In order to solder these pipe caps to the W1GHZ personal beacon boards, you need to be able to get them centered in the right spot. And I've heard of a few different methods of doing that. Um, here's the one I've chosen. Uh, these boards, if I can get this one uh, just right in the position, in just the right position here, do have a uh, a small centering hole uh, right right here for this three quarter inch pipe cap. There's a small centering hole which would be the exact center of the uh, of the pipe cap. I've heard of various methods of uh, measuring out from the hole and, and marking little lines uh, on either side to uh, center this up and I've heard of putting a sharpened screw uh, like a sharpened tuning screw substitute into the uh, pipe cap and letting the the sharp point of the screw rest in that hole uh, while you're soldering it. I've chosen a little different method. Uh, my tool is a little crude. Um, you may have been wondering about the crude tool laying here. A nice machinist tool, uh, you know, like a, uh, I think they're called a divider uh, in machinist uh, language, uh, would be nicer for this. This is just an old cheap uh, household or school type uh, uh, compass for drawing circles, but this works. Um, a little modified method, I have this... Um, this ballpoint pen uh, taped in here. It doesn't matter if the pen works or not. What I do is I set the uh, point of the pen into that centering hole and use the sharpened metal tip here to scribe a, uh, a, a very lightly scribe a line around uh, a little bit larger diameter circle than the uh, outside of the pipe cap uh, so that I can uh, you know center it up on there visually when I set it on the board. And I'm not going to actually do one of those. I think you understand the process from what I just said. It's really hard for me to see those, and I have to get my head right down in there uh, in the way to uh, to do that. But here's a board where I have already scribed a line around for the uh, for the uh, larger pipe cap, and hopefully, if I uh, tilt it around here in the camera, you can see this lightly scribed line around the outside here. You don't certainly don't want to scribe all the way through the metal, just lightly, lightly scribe it. And uh, what should happen when this is all done is the solder should actually uh, should actually cover that line because it's just a tiny bit bigger than the uh, larger diameter than the pipe cap itself. So I'm set up for what is uh, to me the most difficult part of working with pipe caps are, uh, if not difficult, then a little tricky to get right. So here's all the tools of uh, of this process that I'm using, and you'll see how each of these is used, so I'll just go over them very quickly here. My cheap uh, hot air um, soldering and rework station. 
I have this turned all the way up to 500 C, the maximum temperature that it will, will reach, and I've got the air turned up to maximum. Um, the little uh, vise here is used for making solder rings uh, to go around the pipe caps. I'll show you that in a moment. Isopropyl alcohol and a rag for cleaning. Uh, this little brass uh, thing, which is actually a soldering iron tip cleaner that goes in the base of my Hakko uh, soldering station. Also for cleaning pipe caps. Um, solder, 0 0.031 diameter uh, rosin core solder. Some uh, paste flux. Um, and a little setup here uh, that I use for helping to hold the uh, pipe caps in place. A couple of machinists uh, V-blocks. Uh, one is uh, just as a base. Uh, one is a, is a weight which I'll pull out here later and just a little uh, a little metal plate uh, that I've made with a, uh, a um, long machine screw in it here to push down on the pipe cap and just make sure it doesn't move while I'm working on uh, on soldering it. I think a lot of people do this uh, with just pushing down on it with a screwdriver but uh, I can slip uh, as I have proven more than once far too easily doing that and knock the pipe cap out of position so I prefer to have something else holding it down so I don't have to touch it at all and then I don't uh, then I don't mess up or at least that's the theory that I don't mess up however I have proven that I'm capable of uh, having all sorts of issues with this uh, so um, what I found is that my uh, practice soldering of a pipe cap on a scrap of uh, PC board uh, went very very nicely uh, on the first try it came out uh, what I would consider to be perfect uh, but when I actually tried it on these beacon boards, uh, it didn't go so well. Um, the tricky part of my operation is I find that I cannot do this uh, with my uh, setup, and maybe I just don't have enough heat in the uh, hot air uh, uh, system. But uh, I cannot do this unless I have some heat from underneath to uh, help warm the board up. I don't get a good uh, good solder joint uh, unless I do that. So I'm using the uh, the range here the kitchen range to preheat the board from underneath in this aluminum plate sort of as a heat spreader. Um, the tricky part of that is I can't really regulate the heat from underneath to a given temperature so I just kind of guess. I, I don't want to get the board too hot. I certainly don't want to mess up the uh, the uh, plating on the board at all. Um, so that's the interesting part and it really doesn't take a lot of heat but just to to help uh, heat up the board so that the solder flows uh, properly on that stage. Okay, so I'll set up here and show you um, how some of this works. So here's my method for making a nice little uh, nicely formed ring of solder uh, to go around these pipe caps. I've got uh, one of the pipe caps just secured in a little vise here. I'll take the solder and uh, kind of pre-straighten it uh, a little bit Pass one end underneath there, wrap it around the pipe cap. I will weight down the uh, roll of solder so I can tug on this uh, fairly nicely here. Get it snug right around the, uh, the pipe cap. And then I just use a razor blade to uh, cut it off. And that gives me one uh, fairly nicely formed uh, little ring of solder. Now it's not perfect, the end is offset a little, but once I take it off the, uh, or maybe even before I take it off, I can kind of fix the, uh, fix the end there and get that, um, get that lined up. And uh, slip it right off of here. If it needs any minor adjustment to close up any little gap or whatever, you can you can carefully do that uh, at this stage. So that's how I form the uh, the little solder rings. I tend to obsess a little about uh, having everything clean in something like this. Uh, whether it's necessary or not, I don't know. But uh, I like to make sure the pipe caps are nice and clean inside and out, uh, or at least. Uh, inside and in the area where they're going to be soldered before doing this. So I take this uh, this brass uh, scrubber, which is actually a uh, soldering iron tip cleaner, 
put it inside, press it in there tight, and just, uh, you know, work it around uh, quite a bit. I've already really cleaned this pipe cap, so I won't uh, do the full process, but work it around good, get that all clean inside, bring it outside, and uh, if I can just get a hold of a pipe cap here and work it around the uh, the outside like so, and make sure this, this area where I'm going to be soldering is uh, really... Uh, super clean and as I said I've already done this one so I won't work it too much just dump out any little pieces of brass that happen to break off in there then I just take a uh, an alcohol soaked uh, rag and uh, give the inside and the outside a little cleaning to remove any uh, any fingerprints or any uh, oils or anything that might be uh, might be on there and so there's a, uh, a clean pipe cap uh, ready to be placed for soldering. And I'll uh, go ahead and place that and uh, show you what it looks like at that point. So before placing the pipe cap on the board for soldering, I'm just going to put a little bit of this paste flux around the, uh, the edge of it here. I've got a little bit of this paste flux uh, out on a... Uh, scrap of aluminum here and I've got a little artist's uh, paintbrush so I'll just get a little of this flux on here. There's lots of ways you could do this. This is the way I do it and uh, I'm probably going to have to do this off camera because I can't get where I can see it and you can see it uh, well at the same time but I'm basically just going to put a small amount of this stuff kind of on the outside of the uh, rim around here and I don't know if you can see this uh, while I can or not. I'm just working my way around it, putting a little bit of flux, trying not to miss any spots, but just uh, there's a small amount of this stuff around the outside of there. And I'll be able to clean off any excess uh, after soldering, so uh, I don't need to be uh, too, too careful. The main thing I don't want is for a lot of this to work its way inside the pipe cap and be trapped in a place where I can't clean it afterward. And uh, it looks like I've got some all the way around there now, so I'm going to go ahead and work on, on placing the uh, pipe cap. Um, and... Uh, I may actually have to do that off camera. Uh, basically involves just uh, lining it up inside the uh, marks I put on the uh, board earlier, making sure it's right, placing this um, the head of this machine screw against the uh, center hole in the pipe cap there, and moving the weight back there uh, uh, forward so that uh, this thing is pushing down on the pipe cap and so that it can't move uh, during soldering. So uh, let me just uh, go ahead and do that, and uh, then we'll get on with this. Okay, so I've got the pipe cap positioned where I want it on the board. I've got the little arm and the weight here pressing down on it, so it's firmly held in position. There's a tiny amount of this uh, flux that's actually on the actual rim of the edge of the pipe cap, too. And this is a very tacky kind of a paste flux, so that kind of almost acts as a, as a bit of adhesive to help uh, hold it to the board as well. So it's not going anywhere. Now I need to put a solder ring around it and I find that I can spread these just enough to slip them over the, um, the machine screw there and then once they're around it I can kind of squeeze them back together and get them perfectly reformed so they fit nicely again. So I'm probably going to have to get my head right in the way doing this but I'll just go ahead and slip this thing into a position here. Slip it around there, reform it, and if anything, want it a little bit tighter than, you know, a little bit tight rather than a little bit loose. Push it down. And I'll just use a little tool here to, uh, to get it all the way down, all the way around, so it's laying right on the board there. And so there's, uh, that's all ready for soldering now. So at this point, I'll uh, apply some heat from underneath. Uh, let that pre-warm up a little bit. And then fire up the uh, hot air and see if we can solder this thing in place. 
Okay, so the board is warmed from underneath. Uh, it's quite warm now. Not super hot, but quite warm. Uh, and I've actually shut off the heat from underneath now from the range so as not to overheat it. And I'm going to go ahead and get after it with the uh, hot air here. I better have my magnifier right handy in case I can't see this and need to get in there uh, closer. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and put that on. And if my head gets in the way, just uh, bear with me. But I need to be able to see what I'm doing here. So I'm just applying a lot of hot air to the top of this pipe cap to heat the uh, pipe cap up. And the idea is you want most of the heat coming from down through the pipe cap to, to uh, heat the solder and uh, flow it. And this, uh, this does take a while working with what I have here for tools. Went very nicely on the uh, scrap piece of PC board. It's a lot more difficult to do on these actual uh, beacon boards for, for whatever reason. But there it goes. Maybe you saw it flow there. And as a final, uh, final stage, I will put some hot air right down here toward the, uh, toward the board around the uh, base of that to make sure it's all uh, nicely flowed. Uh, all the way around. Yeah, see there was a stubborn spot that's just now uh, just now going. But I think we can uh, call that one soldered. So I'll stop with the hot air. I'll let that cool a little bit and then I'll remove it from there and uh, I might go ahead and clean some of the flux off now before I do the next pipe cap or I might wait and try to do them all after I'm after I'm done soldering. But that's the soldering of a pipe cap. I'll go ahead and do the other two. Uh, off camera and then uh, proceed with this uh, build from there. Okay, here's the final step of soldering for these pipe caps. I've got the tuning screws in place and I've got an extra or a uh, brass nut that I've put on top of each uh, pipe cap to provide extra thread for these tuning screws because you don't get much thread in the uh, thin copper of these pipe caps. Uh, so uh, on uh, these two smaller ones, I'm using a K-lock nut to uh, lock it after tuning, uh, not with the, uh, the uh, free-spinning uh, uh, lock washer built in, built on. I don't have one of those in the 8-32 size, so I'm using a regular uh, uh, internal tooth uh, lock nut and uh, stainless steel nut. I didn't want to pay $5 shipping on a 10 cent uh, nut for this, but I may replace this with a K-lock nut at a later time. So for soldering these, I'm just using my uh, Hakko FX888D 70 watt uh, soldering station, which is uh, kind of adequate. It takes a lot of heat on these. I've got it turned up to the maximum temperature setting. But after a while, it will, um, it will produce adequate heat to do these. Takes a little while to uh, to get them hot, hot enough. These pipe caps do uh, do take some heat to do any kind of uh, soldering on them. Probably would help if I used a little uh, liquid flux or something on here, but I'm trying not to make uh, too much of a mess, so I'm not doing that. There we go. That one's starting to take solder now. So what I'm going to do so I can see the other side is actually flip this around. Put the heat over here. And these probably don't need to be soldered all the way around, but I am who I am. And uh, I like to... Uh, I like to do things thoroughly. <laughs> I drive myself crazy sometimes uh, going the extra mile when it's probably not necessary. So uh, just do this other one here. This one's being a little more friendly probably because it warmed up while I was soldering the other one. The heat conducts right through this board and and up the other pipe caps and and just everywhere these uh, these boards seem to conduct heat uh, really really well all right so uh, that'll do doesn't look perfect but uh, 
it'll do for holding these uh, nuts on here. So that's the final step of soldering on the pipe caps. Now I'm going to build up the rest of the board and test it and hope that it works correctly. Okay, a bit of a post-production note here on uh, these lock nuts on the pipe cap filters. Uh, I had seen a lot of other people use these K-lock nuts. Uh, you know, it's a hex nut with like a built-in uh, little uh, external tooth washer that's attached to the nut, but it freely uh, rotates on there. So, you know, you, you tighten them down and the little uh, teeth around the nut dig into the surface and, uh, and it locks it in place. Uh, I didn't like these um, for the uh, pipe cap filters. Uh, one thing I found, especially on the smaller size ones, is that the little... Um, uh, inner piece of the uh, nut there, not the not the washer itself, but the fixed little piece of the nut, kind of like a rivet or whatever you want to call it that goes through the washer, was actually hitting the um, the uh, brass nut on the top of the pipe cap first, because the little uh, teeth were kind of hanging over the edge of the nut out here, uh, so they were going down lower than they would on a, on like a smooth flat surface. They're kind of going down over the nut. So this inner little piece was hitting before the, the little uh, teeth really were. And so it went from uh, no uh, locking action at all to uh, totally locked in like just a couple of degrees of rotation. And the problem I had with that is that uh, it was just very, very difficult to get the tuning right because you've got a screwdriver in here trying to adjust the... Um, trying to adjust or, or keep the... Uh, the right position on the tuning screw while you're tightening that and it was just really really critical and, and it wasn't working well for me so um, uh, I'd seen a lot of other people use those apparently it worked for them but I didn't like it so what I did is I ended up going with these uh, silicon bronze uh, uh, split uh, lock washers it's just a split uh, split wa lock washer silicon bronze I put that uh, on there with then another just a, a brass nut uh, on top of it. Uh, so what happens there is that as I'm tuning um, I've got a uh, I've got a wrench uh, trying to get in here around the camera this is a little little more tricky than it would be when I'm actually doing this but I've got a wrench uh, on the nut and of course I'm tuning uh, here with the screwdriver so I start with the uh, with the nut just uh, just down enough so it's just barely kind of touching the washer and the, the tuning screw rotates really easily and rotate it around to find the peak and then just uh, you know, using the wrench partly tighten the nut just to compress that uh, split washer about halfway and then there's quite a bit more uh, tension on the uh, tuning screw and fine tune it a little bit and just keep alternating between tightening down and, and tuning the uh, tuning screw with the screwdriver until it's uh, fully tight and tuned and uh, it's kind of hard to describe that easier to do than to describe I think but uh, that worked a lot better for me ultimately I felt like I had a lot more control and uh, and it was much easier for me to get the thing properly tuned and the uh, lock nut tightened down to where it was never going to uh, move again than using the uh, K-lock nuts so whatever works for you uh, you know, if you want to use the uh, K-lock nuts or some other arrangement, that's that's great. I just didn't uh, didn't feel they were uh, they were working that well for me, so I went this uh, this other way. So this is a uh, kind of a finished um, personal beacon board here now, all installed in a box and uh, and more or less operational. Uh, some external cabling needs to be uh, fixed up a little, but. Um, in a later uh, video about the beacon, I'll go over this uh, a little bit more. So, there's my long and complicated, uh, sad story of uh, pipe cap filtering. Uh, with the tools that I had, I uh, pipe cap filter, uh, you know, soldering and, and so forth. Uh, with the tools I had, I finally did uh, get this to work. I just had to come up with a method that works for uh, what I have without going and buying new tools and and spending more money on that end of it. 